Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Commodity TV for you and the new edition in the year 2022 of our online interview series. And we want to talk now for an update with David Stein, the CEO of Kuya Silver. Good morning to Toronto. How are you, David? Good morning, Jochen. I'm doing well. Thanks. Yourself? Perfect. All fine here. Thank you very much. Sunshine in Switzerland. Always good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kuya Silver, we were talking uh, quite a lot of times last year already, and you guys made some really good progress because you published yeah, an initial mineral resource estimate for the Bethania Silver Project. I think that helps a lot on the way to production. Yeah, you know, it's, it's one of those things that... Um de-risks the project um you know we we have been working without a 43101 resource since the very beginning we basically had to rely on some historical data we did our drill program last year um which we finished up in july and then we you know we've been working on the resource and the model and you know it gets a little complex when you're looking at uh 18 to 20 veins in the in the resource but um we're very very happy with the results um and I mean, the total number of ounces is, was, a, was a, a, a modest surprise to the upside, maybe 20, 25% higher than we expected. Um, we have a much bigger mine life based on our kind of planned throughput uh, of, the, of the new uh, mill we're planning at the moment, which is a good thing. It gives us more flexibility to uh, modify and continue to optimize the project in the, you know, in years down the road here. I think for the next couple of years, it's not really gonna change our plans whatsoever. We're, we're still uh, driving the same direction in terms of expected production, expected throughput, et cetera. That's, uh, that's not going to change. Um, and obviously this kind of a resource and a, a model is just begging for more exploration because everything is open. It's getting bigger at depth. It's getting, we've got a lot of uh, new veins. We've got stuff along strike to explore. We've got new areas now to explore with our land, with our increased land package. Um, so this is, this is also at the same time as sort of, uh, I guess, putting a capsule on our 2021 drill program. Mm -hmm. We're also now in the position to turn Bethania into a district scale um resource play and that's very exciting as well so we've got we've got a lot to do here in 2022 and we're very excited about it mm -hmm. super before we talk about 2022 i just wanted to ask you because you have 5.8 million ounces silver equivalent in the indicated resources and let's say around 8 million ounces of silver equivalent in the inferred resources. Would that already justify um, to really go into production and at what pro annual production rate you are planning? Yeah, so at the 350 ton per day rate, um, yeah. you know, that kind of tonnage that we have there would give us a, uh, off the top of my head, eight or nine year mine life. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, obviously that's not what we likely will do. We'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll do, we'll do, um, we'll mine some of the higher grade tonnage up front in the first few years, obviously to maximize NPV, maximize payback, etc. As we explore, we expect that we'll add, we'll continue to add, you know, higher and lower grade ounces, same as, same as what we have here in the resource, uh, to, to the resource. So we can continually kind of reevaluate um, where we go. At some point though, this project likely will be uh, expanded again. So whereas the first expansion that we've permitted or we're in the process of finishing the permits on is 350 tons per day, we might go to 700 or a thousand at some point. And at that point we can start thinking about taking in lower grade as well, because it will be more economic to do so. And I mean, the, the economics of this project are already pretty fantastic. Uh, as it is, but obviously if we can get bigger and get increased scale, um, they should get even better. And uh, that's always something that you strive mm -hmm. to do is to, you know, improve the economics. And it's also uh, tends to be easier and less capital intensive to expand a project than to build it in the first place. So our future expansions, be they in 2024, 2025, whatever, um, should be extremely accretive and high return kind of situations for our shareholders. And that's what we're mm -hmm. looking for. 
Mm -hmm. That's right. Super. And I saw in the equivalent you have uh, silver, of course, is the main part, but you have also some lead, zinc, gold and copper. Can you really use all those metals? Meaning, can you produce like a concentrate out of that? Can you recover those metals? Yeah, the reason why we put them in the resource chart is because we think we can recover all of them. Um, otherwise, we, we wouldn't they wouldn't be there. Um, the uh we're, we're the plant the mill is is uh, designed for three concentrates um the vast majority of the tonnage and value though goes into the silver lead concentrate um and then uh but but it is we will do a zinc only concentrate and we'll do a third concentrate that will end up being copper gold and a little extra silver in there as well so that's that's the, those are the three products we'll we'll sell. As I said, the vast majority of the value and the tonnage goes into that silver lead, that first con. But it is worth recovering the other. It is worth producing the, those other two cons. There's a strong market for it in Peru, and um, you know it, it generates additional revenue for us at very little cost. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. So what is now the path to production? What are, let's say, some timelines? What are your plans? And are you affected by inflation? Meaning, have, have you had any cost risings in the CapEx? Yeah, um, so uh, I'll, I'll answer the timing question first. Mm -hmm. um, so look, I, I think we're, we're at this moment, we're still on track to be starting up um, by the end of this year. Uh, if everything, you know, sort of goes according to plan from here on in. Um, so we do need a, a construction license as sort of a last step on the permitting side. And then we can start building stuff uh, at site. I mean, we can already access the underground. So um, we we might we may actually may see us start doing some underground development even even ahead of that. We'll we'll see. That's something we're evaluating. Um, and uh preparing for you know underground drilling in our next drill drill program etc so there's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff valuable stuff we can do underground at the moment um but ultimately we need to build our mill that's a big part of our strategy so that's that's a big thing we're waiting for and then from there on in it's not a very long uh process to to build to build our our plant our site our plant there um just because of the size of it it's something and the, the parts are very readily available so it's something we feel we can put up within months not years so mm -hmm. um so that's that's the that's the plan that would sort of get us into a situation where we're you know where we're at least starting up commissioning by the end of this year and and uh uh um uh, you know in in full production early 2023 exactly so that, generate um, cash flow exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um and that's that's important that's that's yeah. really part a big part of our strategy we've got a, a low cost project here you know so um why not you know make money <laughs> producing it and exactly. uh, you know fund our future growth from yeah. cash flow instead of just mm -hmm. uh you know uh always having to, to fundraise like most junior companies do mm -hmm. so that's uh that's that's our strategy um in terms of your other question was cost inflation how are you inflation. affected yeah i mean it's something we're we're already i think we've already factored that in yeah. um to uh you know to to uh to what we've been sort of giving soft guidance on um so it's something i mean we're at, we're at such a late stage in in our process we're actually internally at least we're actually getting bids for things and stuff like that so mm -hmm. We're we're on top of uh, on top of it. Uh, there'll definitely be inflation versus like a year ago and two years ago. Um, but it's you know it's not something that is unmanageable because the project cost is so low. You know, uh, a ten percent increase in costs for us is like you know one point two one point five million something on mm -hmm. that order of magnitude, whereas you know, for a lot of other guys out there, you're looking at 20 million or something. It's, mm -hmm. it's a disaster, a 10, 10% 10 yeah. increase. Uh, it's hard to, to raise that kind of money. Um, but for Kuya, we're, you know, that our, our strategy to start small, I think it's perfect. Mm -hmm. It's world mm -hmm. in this inflationary world. 
Yeah, definitely. No, and I think also silver prices shouldn't stay on that low side where they are because the demand is there and the silver market looks really good. Definitely, despite the last, let's say, 15 to 18 months is where silver was a little bit sideways, I would call it. Um, but uh, I would say the outlook is extremely bullish through renewable energies and uh, e-mobility and all that kind of things. Um, if you would put that in context, your resource estimate in context with the whole Bethania mine and with the project, what percentage would that be so far you, 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 you have looked over? Oh, um, that's a, approximately. Yeah, no, that's a, fun, that's a fun exercise to think about, to be honest. So, yeah. um, so uh, look, I, I think we're, you know, we're probably looking at something like, you know, 10% or less mm -hmm. um, at the moment. Um, and, and I mean, here, here's, I guess, my, my rationale. So if you just first of all, look at the, uh, look at the, uh, the mining concession itself, uh, where, where we currently have our resource, um, uh, you know, the, the, our, our field observations is that the whole 1.5 kilometer strike length is mineralized. Um, that's the, the sort of the length east to west of our mining concession. Mm -hmm. We've only drilled or and about a third of it, or about a third of a third of that strike length is in the resource. We know we've got the hilltop zone a little bit further to the east. There's zero resources there at the moment, just because it's a still a kind of a new discovery for us. Mm -hmm. And then beyond there, we have not done any exploration either. So, um, so that that's potentially uh, could triple our resource. That's not talking about what's at depth, of course. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. keep in mind, a lot of that first 650 meters of strike line, uh, or a fair bit of it, is also mined out. So that won't be mined out as we move forward to mm -hmm. further to the east. It'll still be there in the rock. So that's a that's kind of a bonus as well. Um, everything is completely open at depth. There's definitely, you know, again, based on comparable deposits, this thing could double or triple in size at depth, maybe even more. Um, if, if we get a really deep system, mm -hmm. so that's, um, on top of that strike length potential. And then again, that's just the Bethania mining concession. So then if you go outside that you've got, we've got those new properties to the North and the South of Bethania. Uh, some of our veins are trending onto those properties. So we do almost know for certain that, that there's going to be something there that we will be, you know, drilling up and adding to the resource at some stage. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, sooner the better. So that again adds to the story. Uh, and there's a lot more uh, land to explore to the north and the south uh, than there is in, in limited in the in the mine concession itself. And then now you go over to Carmelita, and Carmelita could be a whole nother Bethania. Um, you know, it's got similar footprint on surface. Uh, it was mined, uh, you know, up until a couple years ago, uh -huh. and. It, so we know we know it's productive and uh you know it's still from from our perspective is is still unexplored but we mm -hmm. we like what we see on surface there we can map mineralized veins we've taken some samples but we'll do a lot more this year and you know so that that's a whole again a whole could be a whole nother bethania so um so if, when you sort of add all those pieces together you get something that is way way bigger than what we've got today Mm -hmm. Okay, super. So lots to come, lots of upside potential. This is was the intention of my question. So it yeah. uh, it just started, I would say. So please bring that thing in production, and uh, then let's rock it. Because then you can go also for yeah more heavy exploration. I would say. <laughs> yeah, this is this is you know this is one of those types of projects that gives you know we don't need we don't necessarily need a higher silver price i mean we're, we'll make a lot of money at 22 23 dollars mm -hmm. but if the silver price does go much higher what we can do is with you know presumably at that that higher valuation that we're going to mm -hmm. get is reinvest more aggressively mm -hmm. so maybe take the next five years of exploration and contract that down to you know two years or three years that's something that i could see us doing and again going back to my days as you know, as, a, as an investment analyst, um, that that can be an exciting sort of growth potential where you don't you're not looking for the leverage because you need higher silver prices to justify your project. That's not mm -hmm. the case in in, in mm -hmm. Bethania, but that additional silver uh, price uh, 
comes back in the form of additional growth through mm-hmm. exploration, through expanding the, 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 the plant again, et cetera. And that's, you know, that, that's, that's uh, just uh, hugely exciting when you just think about the growth potential there. Absolutely. Super. David, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the insight. And I would say, yeah, keep it going. Look for the, the uh, final construction decision for the permitting here. And we want to see you at the end of the year, at least uh, with, let's say, with the ramp up and then commercial production early next year. That would be great. Yeah. No, Super. Me too. That's what I'm yeah. looking forward to. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> yeah. Super. Thank you very much, David. All the best. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Jochen. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was David Stein, the CEO of Kuya Silver, and you heard it. Things are really turning, really moving, and the company brought out the first initial, yeah, 43 one-on-one resource estimate, almost close to 14 million ounces of silver equivalent, which is a great big step, but more than they even thought that they uh, can bring out. And so the thing looked really good uh, over the next months. Yeah, let's hope for that uh, all those um, permits and the construction decision can be made and then yeah finance the thing we only talk about approximately 12 to 15 million dollars probably here as a capex which is really low and the company can make a lot of nice cash flow then from next year onwards so check out kuya silver because the stock is really really low priced it's a great opportunity to own and thanks for watching us bye bye from switzerland